All right, so pretty simple. So far we've got the, uh, the back seat flipped up. We've got the cover taken off and we've now exposed our added in uh, return line and then our modified harness with a uh, larger 10 gauge wire uh, that we ran for the fuel pump. So, uh, and the other one's also a uh, ground, right? So uh, we got that off. Now we need to get our uh, mallet or hammer out and uh, get this retaining ring off so we can get access to the fuel pump. Over here should have the fuel pump sender unit uh, and the actual fuel pump itself, uh, which is why the harness is right here. So, um, and if I remember correctly, I think it is built in, but I, I'm old. I don't remember what my memory said about where this thing was connected. All right, we've got our retaining ring hammered off. Get it around our fuel return line. And uh, now we gotta pull out this, this whole assembly remember it just lifts up and there's a seal but probably gonna need two hands for that so let's get to it all right so here's what we got to do get a flathead under here you can just lift it up you can also pull on the edge just a little bit and it should hopefully pop up maybe not as forcefully but you can see down in there that's our fuel assembly so you need to pull the whole thing out and uh, start taking it apart all right you can see there that's actually the crossover tube it doesn't seal or anything it just goes right in there and dumps into the basket so you gotta pull that off. I actually move the clip that goes to that other pump uh, slightly over a little bit to get access to it. You wanna make sure you don't lose this in the fuel tank. Um, so I'm just gonna disconnect it and hopefully I can tie a string to it or something to keep from having to dig it out later, but don't really have much. All right, we've got a quick connect on the top. So we just need to push in the, the retaining clip, which is that one right there. We gotta just push that little thing in and pop this fuel line off. All right, we dropped that line, that quick connect off, and we can now pull the entire basket out. So we got it out. It's a bit of a pain. Let's see if I can get the sender off. There we go. All right, now I can work on it outside of the car. All right, we're uh, looking at the sender here. We've got these four Torx bits that we're just gonna go ahead and unscrew. All right, now that that's off, uh, we get the last clip, which is behind it. Pop that off, and then the whole basket comes out. Got the, the filter here, which, I don't know, could probably be replaced. Might go down the auto zone and pick one up if they have one in stock. If not, we'll do it another time, I guess. And uh, we can get the rest of this stuff out. There's this little thing that came off, which looks like a little diaphragm. Uh, oh, like a one-way valve. Oh, so this goes down in the bottom down here. And uh, it's kind of like a snorkel. If you ever seen a like a scuba mask or something. It's gonna let uh, fuel go in the basket and then seal and not let fuel go out of the basket. So that way, once it's filled with stuff, kind of like a mini surge tank inside your sump, uh, it lets you uh, get some fuel without much sloshing going on. Obviously this is gonna slosh less than your entire fuel tank. It's a little hard to film, but basically we got this clip here and we're able to pull the fuel filter off the bottom there. So this actually looks like, uh, looking at how it operates, this is the actual suction part. Looks like it takes a little bit of the suction and shoots it through here. And that coming out here discharges into the, the, the sump. So it all stays internal, uh, but it looks like it's actually used to create a vacuum over this. So by discharging through this little tube here, shooting through here, we get a vacuum on this portion right here, which is on top of that little diaphragm. So it actually sucks fuel in as the pump is operating. Um, I don't think our, our aftermarket pump's gonna be able to do that. It looks like it's, this is very uh, specific to Mini Cooper. Um, so that might be something we're, we're gonna lose and just let it gravity feed, I guess, and see what happens on the, on the basket. Maybe open it up a little bit, put some more holes or something. Uh, but we popped that off. And we've got three clips. We get these three clips apart. We'll be able to pull our pump out. So I got the, the clips off, so now this pump slides down. Uh, we can take the pump off. The connections here look like they may be soldered in. So we might not be able to just pop them off. We might have to just cut the lines and just mark which, uh, which one's positive and negative, which the brown is the ground and the reddish, orangish brown is the positive. All right, we slightly modified the, the basket there. And all we did was we just cut off one of those little three retaining tabs. We can leave the other ones in place. Not really gonna affect anything. And then now we can put our, our hose on. All right, so this is how I made this all work. So in here, we've got 
basically some uh, some spare hose we got from three th quarter inch hose rolled up and uh, set here so it's like our spacer and then we went ahead and shimmed it on this side and then uh, dumbass so that shim allows us to like get it nice and packed in there and then this is our end stop so it doesn't go all the way in um, so basically it kind of maxes out and then that also allows us to fit it perfectly in the tank so that the filter lays on the bottom of the sump of the basket uh, the only challenge now is going to be making sure that we uh, do something to address the fact that the basket may or may not be uh, filled without that suction vein um, which of course uh, there isn't really a replacement for to make that work somehow I've got the uh, hose clamp on the bottom I had to do a little bit of plastic trimming down there to cut one of the clips off uh, but this should work and then now I need to get that weird right angle fitting, quick connect fitting. I'll probably have to cut it and do something else um, to get this to work. Uh, you know, just do regular push fittings with some hose clamps on it and that should hold. I have the pressure regulated down at 40 to 70 PSI depending on how much pressure we're running. So shouldn't be running 30 PSI boost anyway, but that's the plan. Still gotta do the, the wiring too to the, the rest of the basket and then get the fuel sender, uh, level sending unit and all that stuff together too. We've got our fuel pump and everything back in the assembly. Um, so we got our clip, goes around, we heat shrinked everything um, just to make sure we don't ground out on anything. And then uh, got our obviously our positive going up into our assembly, into our harness connector, and then our ground as well. So pretty straightforward, relatively simple at this part. This is a fun little quick one. What we're going to do is we are going to be cutting our hood so that we can have some venting. So we noticed we had a lot of heat trapped in the hood. It was causing um, our ECU that controlled our power steering to be essentially cooked uh, quite extreme. So we're cutting through the upper layer of skin on the hood and then we're cutting the reinforcing rib uh, beneath that to allow for these hood vents to come through. These hood vents are just plastic. They actually come from, I believe, a Honda Civic uh, eBay hood replacement kind of thing. Uh, and so we're gonna just try and get that put in. We're just gonna use some adhesive to keep it in. And then we have all of our uh, masking tape there, our painter's tape, that is gonna be just used to mark almost as OCD as possible. We're trying to get those lines all parallel and symmetrical on both sides of the, of the hood so that we can get a good idea uh, without playing too many tricks on our eyes to, to get those even. Once you mess up cutting your hood, it is very hard to fix, and it's not like we're going to be able to just weld a patch in and no one's going to notice. So uh, we're using some 3M double-sided high-strength bond uh, tape here. Um, it's kind of got a little bit of a foamy texture to it. Uh, so this is also what OEM panels are bonded with, so it's going to be a relatively uh, strong and, and capable uh, adhesive for us. So peeling that off, I've looped a piece of painter's tape uh, around sort of in the vent and out to let me get a good grip uh, on and uh, kind of placing that in, putting a little bit of tension on that. Now move to the other side and hope it's going to be symmetric. I did not uh, wear a mask on the previous cuts, but I highly recommend doing it. I got a lot of that dust, that uh, grit in my lungs and in my nose and it uh, caused a lot of irritation for a few days. And here is the finished product of those hood vents and I think they look great. Thanks for watching, subscribing, liking and commenting on my videos. That's a great way to help support the channel. If you want to crank your support up a notch, consider becoming a patron over on Patreon. You get early access to videos and you get to have your name immortalized here in the video and I hope that you consider joining them. All right, thanks for watching the video, everybody. Make sure to stay safe and be healthy. And of course, keep modding your cars.